Howdy ho, Maplers, and welcome to Mercedes, the archer of the hero class branch. And, uh, a lot of people's least favorite Link Mule. <laughs> it's no secret that Mercedes is uh, a rather unpopular lady when it comes to the Mule category, because she is just so gosh darn funding dependent to be enjoyable or even smooth at times that people really never give her a second chance beyond being a Link character. However, leveling Mercedes to 250 was surprisingly easy. For the gear, it's just all the same stuff that I usually use between my archers, my meso accessories, my EXP pendant. Nothing too outrageous. Mercedes training beyond 210 isn't that bad. <laughs> Much like getting it to 210, Mercedes definitely requires a fair amount of funding to feel smooth. However, if you do have the funding, Mercedes has the potential to be fairly smooth if it weren't for the height requirements on Leaf Tornado. For your inner ability on Mercedes, you pretty much want attack speed plus one. Because of attack speed zero here in GMS, comboing is always more damage than using Ishtar's ring. Even with attack speed two, <laughs> comboing is kind of already more damage. You do have the option if you're just using this as a bossing mule, if you want to take boss 20, it's not the worst thing in the world. You're just going to be slower at killing those bosses. And Meso and drop rate because the gods were shining on me. After 101 circulators over Maplehood Watch, we didn't get attack speed plus one. We finally rolled it after about 500,000 more honor. So, thankfully we got something good on the second and third line. However, Mercedes is not a very good farmer, so I didn't make the most use of those. <laughs> For the V Matrix, as always, slot number one on Mercedes, as with all classes, not named Bishop. Decent always simple. The best decent skill in the game, you should throw it on pretty much as soon as you hit 5th job. There's really no class that doesn't want this as soon as you hit 200 because it's just free EXP, free drop rate, 100% uptime. There's really nothing better. <laughs> and right out the gates, Mercedes is one of those classes where you have a skill that is so vitally important to your quality of life with training that you kind of have to max it out right away. This also applies for your bossing. The Spirit of LOL. This is the skill that gives you your after image clones that mimic your attacks. It's such a huge part of your mobbing because on its own, Leaf Tornado isn't the best thing in the world. <laughs> but when you have the chance to have three iterations of Leaf Tornado go off every cast, it can make up for quite a bit of mobbing. Not to mention that the tree, the LOL's form, is just obscenely strong and has a ginormous hitbox. This can make up for a lot of Mercedes' lack of vertical mobility while you're training. It's super, super handy, and having it boosted is setting you up for, for good things in the bossing, because this is all of your burst damage. And oh my god, is it a lot of burst damage. <laughs> Especially for an archer class, a hurricane archer class, Mercedes actually packs a pretty serious punch with her burst damage. And right after it, your second best mobbing skill, Guided Arrow. Not even kidding, by the way. Guided Arrow is going to do a lot of carrying for Mercedes. Even more so once the Destiny update comes, it makes this a toggle skill. You really want this thing to have the damage to one shot, but even if it's two shotting, it's still bringing a lot to the table. Mercedes is not the best mobber in the universe, so having another skill that's stacking up combo, which she's already pretty slow at, and just to get mobs that are outside your reach, Guided Arrow is invaluable. It also helps that Mercedes' skills aren't necessarily the lowest in damage percent, so you don't need boost nodes terribly quickly. For a lot of this, I was really only using one trio. Speaking of trios, you have three, although you could get this down to two. Your first trio, and most important, is Wrath of Enlil, Leaf Tornado, and Spikes Royale. 
These are all your pretty much bread and butter mobbing skills. They're also vitally important for bossing, but for our purposes, this is the most important trio for mobbing. You're going to be always using Leaf Tornado, always using Wrath of Enlil, and always using Spikes Royale. Leaf Tornado also boosts Gust Dive, which is perfect because you're more than likely going to be using Gust Dive with Leaf Tornado just for that extra mobility and mobbing. Fantastic trio. Your second trio can be fixed. I kind of just covered everything across three trios because I wanted them all boosted. However, on this second trio, ideally replace Rising Rush with Staggering Strikes and you'll be set. But for me, I got Rising Rush, Elemental Knights, and Unicorn Strike. This is kind of just a setup for your bossing and the final trio of Ishtar's Ring, Lightning Edge, and Stunning Strikes. Stunning Strikes is vitally important to your damage while you're bossing, especially if you're comboing for a majority of your bossing. So if you can slot this in instead of Rising Rush, which is pretty much only for comboing while you're mobbing, you never really use any of these skills for bossing, you'll probably be better off and you can have all your important skills slotted across just two trios instead of slotted across three like I have here. Because realistically, comboing is always better than Ishtar's Ring, I don't really see a need right now for this third trio. However, with the with the classes getting all of their revamps and buffs coming out of KMS, I would not be too surprised if the heroes were slotted for updates fairly soon as well. So covering Ishtar's Ring and Lightning Edge on another trio, as well as Rising Rush, can't really hurt. You need that third trio because Rising Rush is fairly important for your coptering combo, but that's another topic entirely because that really only works when you have a lot of funding and your Lucid Soul is one-shotting, but it is a valuable part of Mercedes' kit that you kind of just need. So these are the other two skills you would boost. They're not wholly useless outside of just bossing, and even then, they're not the greatest. They're kind of just what you boost to have that third trio not feel totally useless. And back to Mercedes class specific skills, you have Royal Knights. This in conjunction with Spirits of LOL is kind of your two mobbing B skills. Sylvinia is sort of a mobbing skill, but she has way more downsides than upsides, especially on Frenzied Spawn, that Royal Knights take the place as your second best V skill on Mercedes. This summons four knights that'll attack periodically for their duration. The duration is not terribly long, it's only 30 seconds, but hey, 30 seconds of good mobbing summons is very, very nice on a class that does not mob very well. Baseline. So, fantastic skill. This also pumps out quite a bit of damage for bossing, as well as being your iframe, both during the cast animation and the disarm animation. You are fully invincible. It's really nice. I do wish for the cast animation that there was a way to break out of the stun lock you put yourself in. Like the only way I found is being on Sylvidia and then using Sylvidia's dash to move while you're in the animation for the startup for Royal Knights. Otherwise, fantastic skill. It doesn't need to be terribly high boosted. The Royal Knights do a lot of damage even at low levels. They're not really gonna struggle for one-shotting and they're still gonna do good damage for your bossing. And then, of course, Sylvidia, the, the wonderful Pegasus mount that Mercedes has. The kind of lost skill in her kit, its purpose really isn't that good. <laughs> like, it gives, it gives pseudo buffs for bossing, but you don't ever want it. It gives decent mobbing, but it's very inhibitive. The hitbox on the dash isn't terrible, and there are there are a handful of maps where it's actually super nice. But generally, it's not really worth using. Because you can't use Leaf Tornado while you're on Sylvidia, you can't combo them together to create like a moving Leaf Tornado barrage. And that's really detracting from its mobbing potential, especially on Frenzied Spawn. The skill is kind of just too slow to keep up. Even just using Leaf Tornado and Flash Jump is more often than not better EXP. And the really only map where this is purely better is VC3, where it is very, very good, but 
It's not a skill I would throw on right away. Really, I would just slot it in every time I was testing new maps, and every time it would just disappoint me and I would take it off again until I got to VC3, then it finally stayed on my board, but it's not a bad skill. It just doesn't fit any of the holes Mercedes has as a class. And finally, the burst skill, Urkala's Wrath. Well, this skill is just gosh darn good, dude. Especially because your spirits of LOL can mimic Urkala's damage. This skill is freaking fantastic. <laughs> it does so much damage. It looks goddamn beautiful. And you can move backwards while firing in another direction. It's super nice. It's very, very handy. It's user-friendly as heck. The only downside I have for this skill is there is quite a long startup to its animation. It's something you get used to, but it feels awkward when you're when you're just getting into Mercedes. The, there is a very definite starting animation to this. But other than that, fantastic skill. It does a lot of damage. I just wish it was slightly quicker, and I believe that might even be something that they're going to change soon. I wish it would dump its damage faster. Because eight and a half seconds of holding this down is a long time. And then your trio of decents. Decent sharp eyes, decent speed infusion, and decent combat orders. You really only need decent speed infusion if you're using a monster park green potion to hit attack speed zero. Since I don't usually use those, I would take this off and throw on Vicious Shot just for bursting elites. But if you are training with green pots, it does make life a little bit easier. You want the decent speed infusion. And, of course, true arachnid reflection, you get it for completing the will storyline, decent mobbing, decent bossing, throw it on as soon as you can. It's pretty handy on Mercedes, again, since you're, since you're an archer, your lucent soul damage is quite low, and Mercedes needs all the help she can get in the mobbing department, so true arachnid reflection, it's pretty darn handy. And, of course, character building one, it's the best specialty node for EXP. Throw it on when you have an extra space, or if you're going to be training for, for a few days. Craft yourself one, use it, then dismantle it. It's very, very worth it. Especially since we have spawn boosters, there's really nothing better. And for Mercedes training. I'll try to keep my complaints till the end. <laughs> and just go through the motions for the training guide here. For 200 to 205... You've got the tried and true, below the cave, or eastern cave path 2. Either one work, I usually choose eastern cave path 2 because it's the less popular of the two. It generally has higher burning, so for classes that I don't have a fire starter ring on, it's pretty darn nice. For this, this is really, you can use Sylvidia here, and honestly this is one of the only areas pre-vanishing... Pre or pre-Moonbridge where it's super beneficial to use it. You can pop Sylvidia and then just jump and recast Sylvidia to get her dash. The hitbox is tall enough to hit every single platform in the map. It is quite nice. And since Sylvidia has such a high damage percent to her, you're not really gonna struggle to one-shot these mobs. I was training my Mercedes to 210 back when I was originally starting in Barra, and my Sylvidia's flight was only like level 1. I was like rocking sub 1 mil range, and it was still effortlessly one-shotting these mobs in Eastern Cave Path 2. It's a fantastic skill at these early levels, and it'll kill mobs real quick. When it falls off, however, if you have it, just drop your Lucid Soul here on the right. If not, wouldn't worry too much about it. It doesn't make up a ton of your EXP rates unless you're fairly funded for these levels. And once it's down, just jump along these left two most platforms and use Leaf Tornado. The only things that are not going to be hit is the lanterns on the second platform, which can be kind of awkward. But as long as you're cycling your, your Guided Arrow, your Spirits of LOL, and your Sylvidia's Flight, you're not going to have too much downtime on mob kills, and it won't be too awkward either. You'll get through these levels nice and quick. And you'll be into a much, much better map at 205. One which I would recommend staying at until 220, honestly. Hidden Underground Train is just kind of that perfect storm map for Mercedes. The layout is fantastic. You're never really going to be inhibited by your height restrictions on abilities. And there really aren't any mobs in this map that you cannot reach. 
you can just flash jump and use your leaf tornado and every mob is going to be hit. You can use gust dive to speed up your combos if you wish. However, remember if you are using gust dive, always follow it with another leaf tornado cast just to animation cancel the slide so that you can flash jump quicker. This map is really, really nice, and for, for this early of a level range, its EXP rate really isn't beaten until you get into Latchelin. You really don't even need your fifth job skills here, just Leaf Tornado is enough to get through this. Throw out your Wrath or your Spikes to clear stuff on top, and it's a very effortless map to clear through. The EXP rates are really, really good, and for the effort required, it's honestly quite amazing. Thank god, because Mercedes does not really have a map in Yum Yum Island where she gets even comparable EXP rates. Hidden Illiard Field feels really awkward for Mercedes. The platforms are a little too close together, and because of the height you gain off of using Leaf Tornado, you're always going to end up on a platform you don't want to be on. And then once you're on that very top platform, you no longer can hit the bottom of the map where over half of the mobs are. So really, this is your best option all the way until 220. It wouldn't be the case if there wasn't a height restriction to Leaf Tornado. The river maps in Choo Choo should honestly be way better than they currently are for Mercedes. And in the future, I hope I could have recommended them. But as it is right now for Mercedes, the Hidden Underground Train is your best bet until 220. It's easiest map with the least downsides, and it gives some really, really good EXP rates. And then at 220, you can head on over into Latchelin for your next fantastic map, Rev 3. Making a triumphant return to one of these training guides is still a very, very good map. For Mercedes especially, if you have it, Lucid Soul in the house, it's just the safest place for her to be, to avoid mobs clumping up on the house. And then honestly, if your soul damage is high enough that she can control the house, all you need to do is flash jump and leaf tornado left and right here in the middle. And you are just shy of full map clearing, or at least as close to as Mercedes is going to get. If you're not fully one-shotting with your lucid soul, you can flash jump over and leaf tornado on the house just to clear the ones on the top. Let her take care of the, the mobs that are on the bottom platform or the ones that are just clumping up in the corner. As long as she's doing a little bit of carrying, it's not too bad. If you don't have a Lucid Soul though, however, I would recommend staying more towards the bottom of the map and just using Leaf Tornado later into your jump and then using either Wrath or your Spikes to clear the house. It can get pretty awkward because there is a timing requirement to not going up here on the second platform. You need to wait until you are falling from your flash jump and then use Leaf Tornado because if you use it on the upward trend of your flash jump, you risk putting yourself up on this platform, which feels quite awkward. <laughs> and it can make training Mercedes quite the struggle. But this map is very nice. It gets good EXP rates too, and this will carry you on into 230 nice and easy. And at 2.30, you have quite the plethora of maps that open up for you. Unfortunately, Leaf Tornado does not really bode too well with the Earth Spirits, so despite how the map is very, very good, it's not that great for Mercedes. She doesn't have the best time clearing it, but she does have three other options. If you are lacking in damage, or you just come here super duper early, like you don't like the Rev 3 rotation, you have the option of Between Frost and Thunder 2. This is probably the easiest map Mercedes has in Arcana because it's the simplest, although it is also kind of the worst for her. Lucid Soul on the left if you have her. If not, no worries. You can always just throw Wrath or Spikes over to the left and you just worry about clearing these middle platforms. This is a very forgiving map for using Leaf Tornado because even if you fall down to the bottom, there is a nice slope down there on the bottom right where you can just flash jump and Leaf Tornado to guarantee yourself back up on these. And you're effectively double platting everywhere you go on this map. It doesn't get the best EXP rates, but it is probably the easiest map that Mercedes has for these lower levels that isn't Rev 3. So if you're tired of the Rev 3 rotation, and you want to come here a little bit early before you're high enough level to go to the, the higher level mobs in Arcana, 
This is your best bet. However, if you're strong enough, if you don't care about the EXP reduction for being underleveled, Mercedes does have a couple options down here in the in the in the river maps. Of course, CLP is one of said options. Despite how much I hate this map, it keeps coming back to haunt me. <laughs> and for Mercedes, it's kind of her best option on Frenzied Spawn, unfortunately. If you have her, Lucid Soul just down here on the right. Really, there isn't too much that she's going to be doing down there. You really just want her to aggro mobs. And then you flash jump and double leaf tornado left and right. If you're on attack speed 0 with a green pot, you do not need to time your jump at all. You are effectively guaranteed to always hit the top. However, if you're on attack speed 2 like me, there is a little bit of timing involved in your flash jump into leaf tornado to guarantee that you're hitting the top. Your second leaf tornado is usually the one that will hit the top, and then your first one will be the one that's clearing the platform you're on and the mobs below you. Once you get the timing down, this map isn't too bad. You'll still occasionally land up on the top, unless you're using a green pot, in which case you'll almost never land on the top. Gotta love attack speed zero. But the map isn't that terrible. <laughs> Especially for Mercedes, since she doesn't have the best mobbing capabilities, she really can't keep up with Frenzied Spawn the best. So even though this map caps out fairly low for Mercedes in terms of EXP rates, just the ease of mind and the effortlessness of training here is something to take into account when looking for a place to train. It's also very simple to loot, which is my main problem with the next map I'll show you, which is her best map EXP wise, but also requires the most effort. CLP is not my favorite map, it's no secret. I really don't like the map too much because it peaks out so low in EXP. Generally, classes in GMS are better than CLP is capable of putting out for numbers, but there are times where you just have to go to this prison cell. And for the final map in Arcana, you have the option of D Cup 2. This map would be a lot better if there was an easier way to loot this bottom left corner of the map. For this rotation, if you have her, Lucid Soul here on these right platforms, it's not too vitally important, and your combo is Flash Jump, Leaf Tornado, and then you'll Gust Dive up onto that platform, Flash Jump, Leaf Tornado, and then Gust Dive again. Make sure every time you're using Gust Dive that you are pressing Leaf Tornado again to cancel the animation, and then once you're over here on the left, you can just Down Jump, throw out Spikes, throw out Wrath, and then go back to the start of your rotation. It's a very slick rotation, and it does not require too high of APM, however, this map is only marginally better than CLP in terms of EXP, and it is significantly worse for the looting department. If you ignore looting entirely in this map, it's about 10% more EXP than CLP can offer on Frenzied Spawn, which is a sizable increase. However, I kind of like looting, there are far too many things in this game that require Mesa, so just letting them expire on the ground is not really in my playbook. <laughs> and uh, this map is very awkward to loot specifically because you never really get down to this section of the map where quite a few of the mobs that you're killing are on. And to break your rotation in order to loot is, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> like, if you're efficiently looting in this map, it actually ends up being worse than CLP, and I'm very sad because I kind of like this rotation. It's really slick, it's quite simple, and it looks cool too. <laughs> It's like, there are there are very few rotations on Frenzied Spawn that benefit from Mercedes comboing, and that is quite sad. Because on Wild Totem Spawn Speed or on Kishin Spawn Speed, for Reboot, a lot of Mercedes mobbing is strictly off of her comboing, where it is quite the contrary on Frenzied Spawn. Your comboing is more often than not detrimental, unless your Lucid Soul is fully one-shotting and you could just use the Copter combo. It's really a shame. And that'll carry you on into 250 if you have the if you have a minimal funding, if you don't have the damage to transition to Celis or into Moonbridge beyond 240 and 245, that map is more than enough to get you to 250. 
it's not too bad. Like, Mercedes EXP rates in Arcana kind of peak out around 90 to 100 bill, which isn't terrible. It's definitely no Thunderbreak. It's no, it's no Blaster. It's no Thunderbreaker. It's no Dark Knight tier EXP rates. But it really should be better. <laughs> <laughs> for 235 until 240 or for 242 until 250 if you want it as an option in Esfera, mts2 is kind of mercedes best map however it's also a very awkward map because of the height you gain off of leaf tornado i really don't like the feel of this map however it is a map that you have as an option you kind of just flash jump and try to land on the middle platform on the bottom so that you can still hit the bottom platformed mobs. However, it can get quite awkward and you'll just end up being all over the place. It's not too bad because you can gust dive onto a platform and restart your rotation. Use Wrath or you can use your, your Moonsault on cooldown to clear those very, very tippity top mobs. This is definitely an option. If you want to form the Asphera spiders as you're familiar, but I wouldn't honestly recommend it. The few hours I trained here was just me trying to fight the map to get a solid rotation down, more so than getting good EXP rates out of the map. Really, the biggest problem with this map is the height requirement on Mercedes abilities. If they weren't a thing, this would be a lot smoother. It's just a problem where as you're flash jumping and moving through these maps, you're getting clipped by platforms that appear below you while you're training and just completely stop you from being able to use abilities. Like both Gust Dive and Leaf Tornado are your very vital mobbing and mobility tools and both of them can just get absolutely destroyed by platforms appearing underneath you. It feels horrible. And this is one of the maps that really drove home to me the idea that the height requirements on this class are what is holding it back. But that is an option if you want to train an Esfera. I would not highly recommend it, but it is definitely there as an option. It will get better EXP rates than CLP if you can get around the, the limitations that it offers. And for 244 until 250... Well, you probably saw this coming. It's just my favorite gosh darn map in the game. Plunging Depths 4. <laughs> Luckily for Mercedes, it works out just fine for her. As with most classes. If you have it, Lucid Soul up here on the left. Will Skill on the right. Or just alternate up. It really doesn't matter which side they're on. Using Spirits on cooldown, you're just going to Flash Jump and use Double Leaf Tornado left and right. And gosh darn, this map is just too perfect. It can do no wrong. <laughs> I love PD4. This map is great. When you're in the right level range for the bonus EXP, you'll be pushing about 100 to 110 billion EXP in here, which is very good. Lucellus is really where Mercedes approaches actually good EXP rates. Once you're in the 240s, there's kind of this switch that Mercedes goes from being a mediocre mobber to just being a slightly below average mobber. And it feels really nice. This was the first area where I hit triple digits for my EXP rates. And oh boy, let me tell you. <laughs> when a class struggles as hard as Mercedes did for EXP, finally getting a battle analysis that showed that nice third digit in front of that billion feels really good. However, this actually is not the best map in Celis for Mercedes. It's hard to believe, but surprisingly enough, PD5 actually puts out the best EXP rates for Mercedes here in Celis. I kind of think it's just because with her limited mobbing tools, this map has so many mobs in it that you're going to be hitting more mobs on average than you would be clearing in PD4 because of your lack of soul damage or lack of summons to take care of the top. But it was enough of an EXP increase that I felt I should recommend it. It's much similar to the PD4 rotation, however, on this right side here, you just want to be comboing up to get as much height as possible, and then you gust dive onto the platform, use Wrath to clear it, drop down, and then just leave Tornado gust dive back. Once you're over at the side, get yourself up, Wrath, set Lucid Soul up on that top platform if you have her, and then just cycle your Knights and your Spirit of LOL on cooldown. 
This map actually gives really good EXP rates, which is insane because this looks so absurdly scuffed, I couldn't believe it, and I probably wouldn't have believed it unless I actually did the battle analysis myself. It's actually much better than PD4. This map will be pushing out around 10 to 15% more EXP than you'll be getting in PD4. However, it requires significantly more effort. So it's really up to you if you want to take if you want to take the plunge and push Mercedes for all she's worth for her EXP rates. This is kind of where it's at for Celis. But for the first time in a long time, 245 until 250. We actually did Moonbridge Prees, because Mercedes actually has a very, very good map here, known as VC3. It has been quite a while since I've been in VC3 for one of these training guides, simply because the EXP curve adjustments and the bonus EXP you get for being within a certain level range of mobs is usually so much better that coming to these super high level mobs, 254, Generally, you're going to end up getting less EXP here than you would just staying in Celis. However, for Mercedes, her clear in this map is so much better than any of her other maps that no matter the level you get here, you're going to be getting some pretty nasty EXP rates. As always, you want to be using your, your Knights and your Spirits of LOL on cooldown. The method for getting across this map is kind of just using Leaf Tornado once every time you jump, because if you use Leaf Tornado twice, it feels more often than not that you mess up your placement on these jumps and you'll fall to the bottom, whereas if you're using only one Leaf Tornado per flash jump, it doesn't really feel too bad. You can throw Wrath or Spikes on either side, I just tended to set my Lucid and Will skill up on the platform above me. They don't really do too much damage, especially Lucid. The Will skill can still clear a couple mobs every now and again, but Lucid struggles at this point in the funding. And the main reason this place is so gosh darn good for Mercedes, Sylvidia can triple plat all the way across this map, and oh my lord does it feel good to do. <laughs> Just three simple dashes, left and right, and you're going across the entire map, triple platting the entire way. Gosh darn, it was such a redemption arc for Sylvidia coming to this map as a Mercedes. <laughs> Pretty much all of the areas that I tested her in, she was just an EXP loss. And this was finally the map where Sylvidia came out ahead of the pack. This map pushes Mercedes' best EXP rates for the level range, and gosh darn, did it feel good. The most respectable rate Mercedes got here was just shy of 130 billion EXP, which for a 250 is very, very good. There are not too many classes that push 130 bill for these 250s. So getting that rate on a Mercedes, who is known to be one of the worst mobbers in the game, it feels nice. <laughs> And honestly, it was, it was kind of nice getting back to Moonbridge. I usually don't do the pre-quest for this area because Celis is just so gosh darn good. The level range kind of has good maps already that you don't really need to come to Moonbridge. And since the mobs are in the mid-250s, you're not going to be getting any bonus EXP or not very much bonus EXP while training to 250. It's nice that they were good on Mercedes. <laughs> It's a, nice, it's a nice flashback when I was regularly coming to this map, back on some of the older 250s. But that's effectively the training for Mercedes. It's a lot of flash jumping, and it's a lot of leaf tornadoing, and oh holy fuck it should be way better than this. <laughs> Alright, I, uh, I said I would hold off on my grievances till the end. Prepare yourself, it's grievance time. The height requirement on Mercedes abilities are the only thing holding this class back from relevancy. I am not kidding. This class is not a terrible mobber. It is just held back by the most cancerous system in the game. Like, I don't mind if these skills can only be used in the air. 
that's a-okay, that makes sense for Mercedes. But requiring a minimum height to use your main mobbing skill and your gust dive is beyond stupid. If the mobile game version of MapleStory can figure out that this was a problem, there is zero reason they should still be a problem in the PC version. These skills should not have a height requirement. It is 2020 fucking 2. If they have to be airborne only to cast, that is okay. Having them be a set height requirement makes this class feel so fucking clunky. It is stupid. The amount of times testing maps where a platform would just come from below you as you're flash jumping through the map and completely negate your ability to use your main mobbing skill is way too fucking many. It is beyond infuriating trying to find rotations for Mercedes because of how inept her abilities are at clearing maps. Unless they are perfectly flat or unless they have just the perfect lineup of platforms so that you can flash jump and get a leaf tornado off before the next platform comes to you. Ugh, I hate this fucking class because of the height restrictions on these abilities. Comboing while you're mobbing also really should be better than just using Leaf Tornado. This is kind of only a problem because of Frenzied Speed, but it's also a problem because Mercedes skills just take so long to go off. If there was no height restrictions on her Gust Dive, if there was no height restrictions on her, on her Leaf Tornado, you could be comboing much lower in your jump and being... you can Gust Dive and cancel Gust Dive much quicker in your rotation to actually push comboing into an EXP positive on Frenzied Spawn. However, because of their height requirements, you need to waste so much additional time for your combos while you're mobbing that it's just not good. Unless you have a one-shotting Lucid Soul and you're using the Copter Rotation, which is just R Rising Rush, Aerial Assault, Leaf Tornado, Wrath one way, Leaf Tornado spikes the other way, rinse, repeat, and then you have your Lucid Soul solo half of the map. Comboing is never beneficial on Mercedes for mobbing, and it feels horrible. Like, there are a lot of classes in the game that just were not designed for Frenzied Spawn. I mean, every class that's not a non-KMS class wasn't designed for Frenzied Spawn, but Mercedes is one of the ones that has the potential to keep it up with it, but it's just held back by a very, very stupid requirement. Oh, Jesus, dude. The, there's also a problem with Gust Dive. Because the end delay on Gust Dive is so long, you need to animation cancel Gust Dive with a Leaf Tornado every single time you use it, or else it is severely slowing down the the speed at which you can get through maps while you're comboing it feels really bad it's just another unnecessary key press that just adds on top of more and more keys to press because holy moly mercedes has a lot of keys dude mercedes is one of the one of the few classes where i've actually had to branch up into my number keys just to fit all of the active abilities on She's pushing Kane level of excessive with her active keys, and it really doesn't feel like that much when you're playing the class, but it, it can be very awkward to fit everything on on your hotkeys in a comfortable way. Mm. Comboing for bossing feels great. I really do enjoy it. It feels really smooth. Even on attack speed 2, comboing feels real good for bossing. It just feels absolutely horrible for mobbing unless you're doing one very specific combo and you have a one-shotting Lucid Soul, and that's kind of dumb. Frenzied Spawn is not something that should be outside of Mercedes' realm to keep up with. She definitely has the mobbing tools to keep up with it, but just the stupid height requirement for her abilities keeps her from keeping up with it a lot of the times. Uh, let's see a positive. Spirit Nimble Flight is a really, really nice skill. <laughs> Try to keep this from being all negative. Spirit, N Spirit Nimble Flight is a really, really nice skill. It's something you can use in the middle of one of your combos just to move yourself in a direction. 
It's one of your one of your key mobility skills while bossing, so you can keep your combo going and then spirit nimble flight in a pinch to get yourself out of harm's way. It's also really nice for your mobility because you can use this to extend your reach both vertically and horizontally while you're comboing. It's a fantastic skill, but it's just another skill among many for Mercedes, to the point where I really didn't use it just because I couldn't find a comfortable key to put it on. However, in the future, once once your your guided arrow becomes a toggle skill, I'd probably move it down to my shift key, just because of how useful it is and how often you can use it. It does have a cooldown of 5 seconds, which is kind of dumb. It doesn't really need it. Like, the skill isn't so powerful that it needs a cooldown. It's kind of just there to have a cooldown, I feel. It could do with that being removed so you can use it more often, get more flashy with your combos. Because Mercedes Shining Point really is her combos. <laughs> For bossing, you pretty much always want to be comboing. Uh, Ishtar's Ring is very lacking in the damage department, even if you're using Lightning Edge's damage bonus, Unicorn Strike, and your spikes royale to get debuffs on bosses it's really not gonna keep up that it really can't even hold a feather to the damage you can get out while using your combo skills and the combos really aren't that complex <laughs> i feel like mercedes is like a much simpler class than people think it is because your comboing is just using stunning strikes in between your combo skills you just stunning strikes in between each skill, and then after Spikes Royale, you want to follow it with a Leaf Tornado and a Gust Dive. On attack speed 2, I don't know if it's just me being bad at Mercedes, but getting the extra height out of Leaf Tornado when you're chaining it to Spikes Royale felt really inconsistent, which is sort of annoying because you need that Leaf Tornado into Gust Dive to get your other skills back in line with their cooldowns for the next combo. But again, that could just be me being bad. I wouldn't expect it to not be, but just a small thing I noticed. Another problem with Mercedes, the hitboxes on these animations do not fucking match at all. Spikes Royale's animation is way larger than the hitbox of the skill, and it is stupid. <laughs> they really just need to make the hitbox match the animation, and Spikes Royale would honestly be as good of a skill or mobbing as Wrath is, because Wrath actually has a proper hitbox. Its entire animation is a hitbox, and it works! It feels great! Wrath is fast, it's quick, it feels perfect to weave in with your mobbing skills. Spikes, on the other hand, has a much bigger animation than a hitbox. It stops you entirely from moving, which can be useful, but at the same time is sort of annoying while you're trying to mob and be mobile, but... The biggest problem I have with spikes is just the animation does not match the hitbox whatsoever, so this skill is significantly shorter than the animation would lead you to believe, which can kind of make some rotations feel awkward. Like, MTS2 would be a lot more simple if you could just wrath one side, spikes the other, but spikes is too goddamn short, so you gotta use moonsault, and let me tell you, moonsault's not that good. The hitbox is absolutely itty bitty. For mobbing, it's, it's bad. Uh, what else do we got? Let's do another positive. Updraft, Mercedes passive that allows you to just zip-zop up, up a rope. Feels great, it's super fun. I honestly wish Updraft was a basic V-node because it is it is absolutely joyful <laughs> to just zip up a, up a rope or a ladder. And it is a shame that this is a Mercedes-only skill. I wish everyone had this, because it feels great for mobility. It's another reason you don't really need rope lift all that often for Mercedes, if at all, a lot of the times. It just feels fun to move as a Mercedes because of updraft. It's really, really, really fun to mob when you have a good map. However, because of the height restrictions, there aren't that many good maps. And honestly, this class could be so much fucking better if we just took a, a note out of the Maple Story M playbook and removed the height requirement for Leaf Tornado and Gust Dive, because really, 
for these skills that you need to be using constantly, having such an arbitrary restriction does nothing but make the class feel worse. There is no positive side to these skills having a height requirement. There is no benefit. It is purely just detriment for detriment's sake. And it is the sole reason I probably will not recommend Mercedes as a class, despite how much I like its bossing. Its mobbing is so user unfriendly and not great. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are just so many better classes that don't feel like they're punishing you for playing them. The height restrictions have got to go. That literally, you could change nothing else about Mercedes, remove the height restrictions, and I'd completely change my recommendation. But uh, as they stand. They're horrible. They feel horrible to play. It's it's as bad as manual possession only on Cade. It is just a ridiculous, arbitrary requirement on the class that just does nothing but deteriorate the experience. And it's a crying shame because I god dang like Mercedes. This, is, this was one of the classes I made for quite a while. Before reboot released, I was a, I was a pretty consistent Mercedes player for many of the years where Leaf Tornado was bugged in GMS and the hitbox was significantly shorter than the actual hitbox was supposed to be. Mercedes is a really fun class to boss with. It's one of the classes I enjoy bossing on the most. It feels super good. It looks amazing. I love the class's design. I love its aesthetics, but holy fuck, this is the dumbest requirement I've ever seen in a class. Oh, I'm glad to be done with Mercedes. I am very glad to be done with Mercedes. Like, logging into train each day and knowing I'm just gonna have to deal with this stupid fucking height requirement was actively eating away at my enjoyment of Maple Story. So, I'm glad to be off of Mercedes. Oh, and I'm glad to be done being a negative Nancy about this class. It's in the past now. I'm going on to greener pastures. Onto a more demonic class. One with better mobbing. One that looks hella cute. <laughs> but that is another class for another video. This has been Mercedes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about Mercedes, about playing MapleStory in general, about my guy, or about my journey to get all of these classes in MapleStory to 250, feel free to ask down below. I make it a point in all of these all of these videos to answer any and all questions I might get. Be sure if you're asking a question, throw a question mark on there. The YouTube algorithm has a problem with showing me comments on some of these older videos if they don't have question marks on them. So easier way for me to find your comment and actually give you a response. And until that next video, see you later.